The main role of a hospital during a disaster is to preserve life and health. Often, disaster preparedness focuses on technical details and misses the bigger picture of assuring life and health. The definition of a disaster is any event that overwhelms a hospital's resources. A disaster is defined by the availability of resources, not by the magnitude of the need. One multi-vehicle collision may overwhelm a small hospital, while a larger mass casualty incident at a level one trauma center may be a normal busy day. In the event of a disaster, as many as 80% of the patients will arrive at the hospital on their own without prior notification. This includes patients who may be contaminated with harmful substances. In fact, hospitals may be the first to recognize an event that includes hazardous materials or infectious disease. To receive accreditation, hospitals must have an emergency operations plan. This plan needs to identify the hospital's capabilities in the event of any emergency. Hospitals need to be self-sustaining for 96 hours, and many are not ready. Hospitals also need to be linked with local providers and local emergency management. In addition, the Healthcare Resources Service Administration, HRSA, mandates that all states establish a system that allows for the triage, treatment, and disposition of an additional 500 adult and pediatric patients per million population regionally above your normal operating capacity. Think about how busy you are on an average day. Are you prepared? The steps to good response in the ED are recognize, protect, decontaminate if needed, triage, and treat. Recognize that there is a situation or hazard. This means that all your staff need to be trained to recognize hazards and spring into action. Remember, as many as 80% of patients during an incident will arrive to a hospital on their own. Do your training drills look like this? Okay, so what is, what is the purpose of this? Why was I called here? We're supposed to be on a drill. Today. Yeah, there's a drill. I don't know. A disaster no, I'm waiting hazmat phone drill calls. or something? Uh, not another disaster drill. Right. Yeah, yeah. i got to get my phone calls done. Hi, guys. So what are we doing? We're supposed to have a drill. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what they want us to do, actually. I... I'm waiting on those phone calls. Hey, what's going on? You call this drill. Is that today? Yeah, me and Dan, we're supposed to do it. I thought it should be now. Oh. Well, I don't know. No one's really gave any clear direction. Give me a couple minutes. Well, I never put these things on in two years. I better get over here and start looking at stuff. Well, Dan, call me. I'll be in my office when it's time. Okay. All right. Well, we'll call you. I'm going to wait for those phone calls. Okay. I'll be saving lives. All right, everybody. We've had our drill. How do you think we've done? Let's review our speed. How do we do with that? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. You think we're okay with that? How much time do you think we did? What do you think our time was? Yeah. About 55 minutes. 55. All right. Preparedness, were we ready? Pretty well. Yeah. I think so. Okay. We'll give that one a go. Have a surprise drill to keep your staff on their toes. Training must be ongoing if your staff is going to learn how to react properly. Hi, I was working on my farm and getting ready to fertilize the crops and we got some stuff on me now I can't breathe. If you'd like to have a seat right here in triage, we'll be with you in a few moments. Thank you. Not recognizing a hazard could shut down a hospital, possibly for days. Shower. <coughs> Just see if I want the doctors. Joe, come on, we're going to go down to the decon shower, get you cleaned up. Are you okay to walk? Yeah, 
just some trouble breathing. Okay. Charge, we have a decon situation here. Can you put a send down uh, to the shower area? Just a few more minutes down here. Maybe take off your clothes and put a gown on, and the doctor's going to take a look at you and get you feeling better, okay? And figure out what you were exposed to. Once staff comes in contact with a patient exposed to a hazardous material, they too must be observed for potential contamination. Recognizing and reacting to an incident involving chemical or biological exposures takes an open mind and high index of suspicion. Protect yourself and your staff. This includes everything from securing your hospital, managing patient flow safely, and using personal protective equipment if needed. Decontaminate if needed. Decontamination training should focus on the life and health of patients. Don't focus primarily on the technical details. There are times you will need to improvise. Some antidotes, particularly for organophosphates, need to be given early in the decon process to be effective. Mass decontamination to save life needs to be rapid. Clothing removal and self-decon with water should be planned for ambulatory patients. Do not delay decontamination to set up a tent or contain runoff. If you don't have a tent, use what you have available. The EPA states there is no need to contain runoff when trying to preserve life and health. Triage is the key skill for hospital providers. All personnel should be comfortable with start triage. START stands for Simple Triage and Rapid Treatment. A portion of each month should be dedicated to completing a triage tag on routine patients to keep providers familiar with the process. TREAT. Have a plan that works for your hospital. Be involved with your local emergency responders. Michigan is divided into designated emergency response regions. Your hospital needs to be involved in your region. Know your regional leaders and be at the table. Last but not least, you need to prepare yourself. Preparation is more than duct tape and plastic. If you are going to be needed in a disaster, then you need to ensure that your family is safe. For example, you need a family plan, family contact in and out of the area. Know the school plan if you have kids in school. Get in the habit of keeping the gas tank full in all your cars. Have enough food and water to last at least four days. Pre-pack evacuation bags with such items as sleeping bags and clothes. An old-fashioned non-cordless phone is essential. These phones work off the phone line only and often work during power outages. A cell phone may or may not work, but you should have a car charger for your phone. To help you prepare to train and respond to emergency disasters, the Michigan College of Emergency Physicians provides a variety of resources to make your life easier. A data CD included in this package contains files that will help you train, run drills, create hospital policies, and improve your level of preparedness. On the CD you will find sample hospital policies, drills, evaluation tools, educational modules, data resources, and Michigan resources. These are for your use and are provided in multiple formats, added as needed for your emergency department. The Michigan College of Emergency Physicians also has resources on our website. Go to www.mcep.org. The State of Michigan also has many resources. All the links are on the website www.michigan.gov slash Michigan Prepares. The key to good response is training and education, not new toys. We want to know how you use the product and keep in touch with MCEP. We are here for you.